tax freight train is bearing down on your retirement. To protect yourself, you'll have to harness the power of zero. Hi there, and welcome to the Power of Zero show. I'm your host, David McKnight, best-selling author of The Power of Zero, Look Before You Lerp, The Volatility Shield, and most recently, Tax-Free Income for Life. All of those can be bought in single copies on Amazon or wherever you buy fine books, or in bulk, you can mix and match and combine discounts at David McKnight Books. Dot com. If you have yet to do so, you can also check out my YouTube channel, simply David McKnight YouTube channel, where many of these episodes are now being broadcast on video. And uh, you'll be able to see different video resources, visual aids that'll help you understand better and contextualize everything that we're talking about during these podcasts. If you're looking for someone to help you navigate all of the barriers that stand between you and the 0% tax bracket, head over to davidmcknight.com. We'll hook you up with a member of our elite Power of Zero advisor group in your area, someone who's been trained, qualified, vetted personally by me. And if you're an advisor who wants to transition to this type of practice and adopt the Power of Zero worldview, you can head over to powerofzero.com. Today is the first part of the interview that I conducted with Van Miller. Now, Van Miller is a financial advisor out of uh, Milwaukee. I've known him for uh, a lot of years because I used to live in Milwaukee. In fact, I lived in Milwaukee for 15 years, so I got to know Van very well. Van is also someone who does a lot of speaking engagements like me in a non-COVID reality. He does about 100 speaking engagements uh, per year. And he also has a newsletter that's subscribed to by, gosh, something on the order of 100,000 financial advisors all across the nation. So his specialty is helping us understand the fiscal condition of the country, not just as it relates to the national debt and the spending issues, but a lot of the other economical issues that confront us in a rather glaring way over the course of the next 20 years. Sit back, relax, enjoy the first half of my interview with Van Miller. Van Miller, welcome to the Power of Zero show. Nice to be with you. I miss you here in Mequon when you're here in the States. I'm hoping yes. everybody's safe where you're at. Yes, we fellow cheeseheads uh, need to stick together. And I miss our frequent lunches at the Chancery there in Mequon. So the next time I'm, I'm in town, we'll have to revisit that and uh, reminisce about old times. That'll be so, awesome. So I've been uh, reading your most recent newsletter, and I want you to tell people before we're done here today, particularly financial advisors, how they can get a hold of your newsletter. But I was reading your most recent newsletter, and you started off by talking about this stealth tax, inflation. And you're telling people that they should really be worried about it because why, why don't you tell me why our members of the general public should really be focusing on inflation and how to combat inflation. What's driving inflation? As David, I'm an aficionado of the power of zero. I think that information is absolutely vital that Americans have access to and understand how to take advantage of that information that you're sharing with them. But what has ended up happening is the government has gone to such ridiculous extent of spending more than what they have that you're not gonna believe what I'm about to tell you. By 2029, the government will literally have to print the entire budget of the United States. And so let me make it easy to understand the stealth tax. I'm not crazy about using the word inflation because I don't think a lot of people really understand it. So let me very quickly share with you why it's so important for us to pay attention And if you have children or grandchildren, you should be absolutely worried about it. Here's the thing. In the year 2000, the population of the United States was 300 million people. And the M2 money supply, which is a good barometer of inflationary statistics for our country, said that there was $4.9 trillion of money in circulation in the economy. According to the usdebtclock.org, which gathers its information from the Federal Reserve itself so you can verify the information at federalreserve.gov, it shows that in the year 2021, right now, 
The population has increased to 330 million, a 10% increase, but the M2 money supply increased to 19.4 trillion, which is a 350% increase. By 2025, they expect the M2 money supply to increase to almost 45 trillion, which means in the next four years, they'll print $20 trillion of money. And here's the punchline. By 2029, they are expecting that the M2 money supply for our country will be 122 trillion from our current 19.4 trillion. And what that does, a better way to explain it when I'm talking to customers, when I'm talking to everybody, is doesn't that reduce the purchasing power of our money? And isn't that an additional tax put upon us over and above the income tax, property tax, sales tax, all the other taxes that we pay. And so it makes it even more vitally important. I know this sounds weird how I'm gonna come back to this, but if you can figure out a way to reduce or eliminate your income tax liability, you are offsetting some of the damage of this reduced purchasing power. And the methodologies that are used by really good advisors also use pennies to buy dollars or leveraging, and that leveraging can also be used to offset this coming stealth tax that is, is approaching us. And so it's vital that we get in front of people and tell them not only are they going to essentially increase your income tax, they're going to dramatically increase your stealth tax by reducing the purchasing power of your money. Yes, this has really concerned me, particularly with the advent of what was known as modern monetary theory. I talk about it quite often. And Stephanie Kelton, who's a professor who re recently wrote a book called The Deficit Myth, she and, she and I actually have the same literary agent, but she wrote a book that a lot of people are taking a look at called The Deficit Myth, which basically says the federal government has an infinity bucket and they don't operate by the same rules as American households who have a finite amount of money that flows through their budget. The federal budget has an infinite source of money because they can just keep printing money. And I think what you've explained here is that they uh, not only have done that in the past or doing it now, but they plan to do that in the future along with a dramatic rise in taxes over time. So scary, definitely scary stuff. And I think it accents the need for us to continue to grow and compound our money over time, not to just go into stall mode once we get to retirement. Now, another thing you mentioned in your newsletter is the importance of paying attention to what's on a website called truthandaccounting.org. Tell us what, why that website was created, who it was created by, and why it's important for us to pay attention to what's on it. Thank you for the question. Before I answer that, I wanna make sure because you and I are talking about some scary stuff. But what you and I also know is that it, what's so great about being an American is that we can have solutions to these situations. You don't need to be dependent on government or Wall Street or the banks. If you develop a strategy, you can still not only not be hurt, you can actually win. You can take advantage of this information. And so it's vital as we tell you these challenges that people understand that you don't have to be harmed by them. All you have to do is take action before they impact you. And I think that's the message you and I try to convey all the time. But the answer to truth in accounting is put on by accountants. And what it does is it tells you the financial state of our federal government, the financial state of the 50 states, and the financial state of the 75 largest cities in the United States. And in February, the Truth in Accounting just updated their information about the cities. In September, they updated the information about the states. Listen to this, 62 of the 75 largest cities in the United States cannot pay their bills, not cannot. And over 40 of the 50 states do not have enough money to pay their bills. And obviously, please understand, our country is 28 trillion in debt right now, will be 48 trillion in debt by 2025 and will be about 87 trillion in debt 
by 2029. We're never paying any of this back, so we're going to have to deal with a new financial world that requires some strategies that allow you to not be hurt by this ridiculousness of government. So the way I use truth in accounting is I talk to customers and I say, now, here's the thing. Can states and cities print money? And the answer is no. And so the only way that they can pay their bills is they either have to increase your taxes, they have to lower your benefits, or they have to borrow more money or a combination of all of those things. And pretty sure it's gonna be a combination of all of those things. And then here's the killer question. Do you think that'll be enough? And the answer is most of the time, no, it won't even be close. And I say, you're exactly right. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna go to the federal government and ask for a bailout. And there's precedents. We bailed out New York City, we bailed out Detroit, we bailed out Chrysler, we bailed out the General Motors, long-term capital in, in 1998, we bailed out. So we've been bailing out uh, companies and industries for quite a long time, and we're not going to let all these people go without their benefits. So all of these Congress people are going to ask for a bailout, and the government's going to give it to them because they're not gonna let anybody go without their benefits. So even if you get your benefits, this is the fun part. They're gonna tax the heck out of them and they're gonna reduce the purchasing power of the benefits. So even if they print the money to give you the benefit, it really will not be anywhere near what the value is currently. And so you must do some planning. And so that's what I talk to my customers about. I wanna make sure they understand that this is happening on multiple levels. Two quick things if I can throw them in here and then I'll let you ask another question. Do you know in the year 2020, I'm gonna read this, this just came in the mail to me. If you add up all the money that the US has ever printed, over 40% of it was printed in the year 2020 alone. Over 40%. Do you understand these people have happened on to a new methodology that doesn't require any economic common sense they now have an unlimited printing machine that they're going to print regardless of what damage it does to you, your children, and your grandchildren going forward. It's ridiculous planning. It's ridiculous policy for our government, and we need to do planning to offset. Yeah, I was, I was first introduced to truthandaccounting.org from actually Dr. Kotlikoff on the movie in which you starred, by the way, Power Zero, the tax train is coming. And one of the things that he mentioned that is borne out on truthandaccounting.org is we tell the world that we have $28 million, or sorry, $28 trillion of national debt, but that doesn't include any of the off the book transfers, any of the off the books obligations. When you talk about everything that we promised to pay for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, you add that all up and say, how much should we have to have sitting in a bank account today earning treasury rates to be able to deliver on all those promises? Our national debt is much closer to, as of last year, it was about 240 trillion. I'm sure it's much higher this year. And truthatacounting.org, I think is an important website for people to pay attention to because it tells you how the rest of the developed nations in the world conduct their balance sheets. And we're the only developed country in the world that doesn't include those those obligations on our balance sheet. So it, it lulls us into this false sense of security that things are really going well when the realities are going about 10 times worse than we're, we're telling everybody. Another thing in your, your newsletter I thought was very poignant. You talked about a scenario where you talk with grandmas and grandpas and you ask them if their children and grandchildren inherit money, Will they spread the tax obligation on that out, out over the 10 years that the Secure Retirement Act allows them to pay tax on it? Or will they realize it as income all at once? In other words, once they get their hands on that money, are they likely to spend it right away? And what responses have you gotten as you've asked that question? I'm still an insurance and financial professional, and I still run many appointments every year. And I would say almost to the tune of 100%, I'm told that the people will take the money immediately. They would rather get their hands on the money now, even if they have to pay taxes, because it helps them take care of certain situations that the children are already in, or they feel they can do a better job if they have it all at once. 
instead of getting it over a 10 year period. And they actually think that they can make back the taxes that they're going to have to pay. And in most of the cases, they end up spending it or they end up not investing it well enough to do what they were hoping to do. And so what I say to the parents is, what if while you were alive, you could eliminate the income tax liability on this money on behalf of your children, and you didn't have to give up control of the money first. And second of all, if you do the strategy correctly, you could actually have somebody else pay all the taxes that it will cost you to get the money out, get rid of the income taxes, and transfer it on to your family. So I tell them, if you'll laugh at me, I say, do you have any idea how brilliant you are? You figured out a way to get all your money out of your IRA or your 401k or your 403b or your 457 plan, and you didn't have to pay one cent of the income taxes out of your own pocket. Could you be any more brilliant if you tried? And they go, no, this is all you, Van. They say, no, if you didn't have the money, there isn't anything I would be able to do. What you did is because you were so successful, you painted a gigantic target on your back for an entity that really desperately needs revenue to take care of a whole bunch of people who weren't willing to do what you were willing to do. Yeah, so this is huge. I've never actually had anybody tell me that they've had discussions with grandmas and grandpas about how this is gonna go. Because remember, for our listeners, the IRS allows you to take that money at any interval over a 10 year period. You can take it year by year, you can take it all at the end, you can take it all at the beginning. Uh, and of course, if you take it at the beginning all in one year, it all flows into your tax cylinder and lands right on top of all your other income. You're at the apex of your earning years at a period in time when tax rates could potentially be much higher than they are today. And then you're gonna end up giving up 50% of that IRA or 401k or 403b or 457 to the IRS. So your children end up getting less of that money. So it may make a lot more sense to pay tax at the grandma and grandpa's historically low tax rates, get it repositioned at tax-free by way of a life insurance retirement plan, uh, Roth IRA, so on and so forth. So that, that was very telling. I perked up when I saw that conversation, very interesting. We knew we were on a bad fiscal trajectory prior to COVID-19, okay? Things were, when you look at the trajectory of the debt, the, the fiscal solvency of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, it was already pretty dire. What is the net effect? Where are we sitting now that COVID-19 ravaged our nation for a full year and there's no real end in sight? What, how did COVID-19 change everything? And that's a wonderful question. And to be honest, I don't think anybody knows the true answer yet. We, I read 14 newspapers every day because I'm an information junkie. And in the New York Times this morning, they showed that since the beginning of this, 470,000 Americans have died due to COVID-19, and there's some argument that it might be actually even higher than that number, and that they're expecting, they're waiting to see what's going to happen after Super Bowl weekend, and uh, what's going to happen with all these additional variants that are coming into our country. That toll could go up to 600, maybe even 700,000 people. We don't know how that's going to impact the earnings of insurance companies yet. We, this morning, they came out with another jobs report that said another 793,000 people applied for unemployment, which means now, listen to me carefully, 49% of all the workers in the United States have filed for unemployment since the COVID-19 began. Many industries will never recover. The ones that do recover will operate under a different circumstance. And the real harm that I think has happened is that there were many jobs that were available to people that did not have great skills other than they were charming or they knew how to make you have a great time at dinner or they served you a great drink or whatever. And those people were able to make anywhere between 50 to 150,000 bucks a year. And they didn't have any other skills other than helping people have a great time. And all those jobs are decimated. And so we really don't know to this point how that's going to impact our economy going forward. There's a site I would like to send everybody to. It's called Wage Statistics 
for 2016. You have to type it in that way because I don't know why, but that's the way the internet works. And when you get there, you update it to the latest year, which is 2019. Listen to this, David, you won't believe it. There are 166,000 Americans in 2019 who made over a million dollars, 166,000. And if we tax every one of them at 100%, we would only collect $408 billion of tax revenue. Now listen to this. There was 169 million people who paid Social Security, and listen to this, 18 million of them made more than 100,000. So that means everybody else made less than 100,000. So if you tax all of them at 100%, plus all the people that make over a million dollars at 100%, we only pick up $3.7 trillion of revenue, and the government's budget this year is over $6.5 trillion. So if you reduce that down to 50%, which you and I figure it'll be difficult for them to go much past that without revolution, 50% of 3.6 is 1.8 trillion. Where do they get the rest of the money? They're gonna print it, <laughs> but they're really gonna go after. See what's happened is they're removing more people off of the tax rolls and the 10 or 15% that are left are going to pay more and more taxes. And this wage statistics proves it. There are only so many people that are making incomes enough that you can tax. I, I'll read you something, this will blow your mind. Do you know that 67% of America makes less than 50,000 a year? And 50% of America makes less than 33. So here's the point. 81% make less than 75,000. So I ask every person that I come in contact with, I say, can I ask you something? If you're married with two children and you make 75,000 a year, are you rich? And you're not. And so I make it clear to everybody that I get in front of that the people over that 75,000 number, they're coming after you with pitchforks. They're coming because they need revenue. And if you don't read The Power of Zero, if you don't read all the follow-up books that show you how to take advantage, if you don't hook yourself up with an advisor who understands how that works so that they can steer you, to a place where you can be in control of how much you pay rather than allowing the government to dictate to you how much you can pay, then you're really asking to have what you've worked your whole life be decimated. Yeah, it's sobering when you think about the, the, like I said, the already perilous fiscal condition of our country and then everything that has ensued over the last 12 months. We had David Walker on a few weeks ago yeah, we, we both think he's an American hero, and we've both long said that. But he, he, I asked him what the fiscal impact of COVID was, and he said, look, Social Security was going to you know, be bone dry in 2035. He says, move that date up three years. It's 2032. Medicare was going to be bone dry in 2026. Move that up three years to 2023. I, I don't think that people fully appreciate the fiscal impact on our country of having two of the programs that consume the majority of the budget, these non-discretionary spending initiatives every year, we have no control of that spending. It's pegged to inflation. As inflation goes up, the cost of these programs go up. It's, it's something that has to be resolved. And every year that goes by where we fail to resolve it or address it means the fix on the back end is going to be even more austere and even more draconian. Let's talk about, we had Ed Slot on last week, and I asked Ed, when he thought tax rates were going to go up for the middle class, I, I tend to believe that Joe Biden campaigned on the promise that he would not raise taxes on the middle class and that when he sends his tax reform through, he will essentially extend those tax cut and job act tax reductions on the middle class another eight years through budget reconciliation. Not everybody feels that way. That's how I feel it. Ed feels the math is bearing down on our country and we can't afford the luxury of postponing taxes on the uh, raise in taxes on the middle class that long. He thinks it could happen next year. Do you have any feel for how much longer middle class Americans who are looking to shift money from tax deferred to tax free take advantage of low tax rates? Do you have a feel for how long that period of time will last? 
Yeah, I think it's going to start right away. I agree with Ed. The government needs revenue. And please, if you really listen to what I said, 150 million Americans are available to pay additional tax, but they'll do it sneakily. And here's what I mean. Currently, it's about 15% federal and for uh, Social Security and Medicare tax. I think it's 15.3. I think they're going to raise that to 18 or 19, somewhere around in there, so that they have additional revenue coming in to take care of those things, because they have a serious math problem. Over the next 25 years to 2045, they have 140 million Americans turning 65. So they're gonna have to come up with some money to pay these people, or they're gonna go on the war path. That's the math of it. But the second thing that they're already doing is the stealth tax. You pay a stealth tag, if you earn 10,000 bucks a year and you will now only can buy $7,500 worth of goods and services, you're already paying a tax because of the government's mismanagement. And please, this is what's so horrible when you talk to people like us. Everybody thinks that what's going on in our government is a tax problem. It's really not, it's a spending problem. And the taxes, it's easy to blame taxes, it's easy to, go after taxes. But if we spent what we brought in and learned to live the way people are supposed to live, we I think we would have a different scenario. But nobody has the political courage on either side of the aisle to stand up and say, hey, we got to stop doing this. But it's really funny. They spent more money than they've ever spent the last four years. And now we have a new administration in, and now that party has become fiscal hawks again. Oh, no, we can't spend. <laughs> they can say all of that. Do you know why they can say that, David? Because they can't do anything about it. They don't have the votes anymore. So they right. can play high and mighty. Oh, we can't do this, but everybody's going to pay in our country. Okay, folks, as you can see, Van Miller is uh, intimately acquainted with all of the ins and outs of the fiscal condition of our country and the challenges that we face. Recognize that notwithstanding all these challenges, there are things that we can do starting right now to help insulate and protect ourselves from what some predict are going to be fiscal calamities coming down the pike. I don't want to sensationalize any of these things. I want to approach them in a very sober and realistic way. There are things that we can do starting right now to help insulate it and protect us from the impact of these financials, financial issues that are coming down the pike. Once again, if you are looking for someone to help you navigate all of this, head to, head over to davidmcknight.com. We can hook you up with a member of our elite, elite POZ advisor group. And if you're a financial advisor who wants to learn more, head over to powerofzero.com. Uh, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, David McKnight, uh, simply David McKnight, where you can see uh, a lot of these interviews, the live video interviews that we have done with these interviews, interviewees for our podcast. And I would also appreciate a follow on Twitter at McKnight and Co at McKnight and Co. Thanks for attending. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. And we look forward to chatting with you same time next week.